Hello, thank you for joining me today. I wanted to go over a little bit about electrical testers, uh, give you some live demonstrations so that way you can get a feel for how these tools work and what they can possibly do for you versus maybe something like a clamp meter or a multimeter. So what an electrical tester does is it takes you a little bit further than a voltage detector. A voltage detector simply tells you if you have voltage present or you don't have voltage present. So it's either whether it's hot or it's not. You can troubleshoot quite a bit with these, uh, which I went into in another video. But sometimes you need to go further. And what an electrical tester does is give you more information. So here I have an array of electrical testers, and I just want to do some quick demos to show you what they're capable of. First, safety is very important. Make sure you're always wearing your safety glasses and that you have insulated gloves and that you also know that the category rating of the instrument is sufficient for the area that you're working. These are category 3,000 volt instruments. This is category 3, 600 volts. What that means is they're safe to use up until the electrical panel where the service comes into your building. So these are safe for industrial electricians, residential electricians. These two are category 4, which means they're actually safe for utility workers as well. The first instrument I have is a indicator that, that doesn't have a meter display, but what it does have is a series of LEDs. There's no on-off switch. It's very simple to use. The leads are an integrated part of the instrument, so you'll never lose them. They're also a very heavy-duty lead, so they'll take a lot of abuse. What's nice about these is everything is automatic. If I just cross the leads, I turn it on, and then if I'm doing something like continuity, I see the indicator and there's also a little vibration that tells me that this is a short or if it's open. If I'm then just going out and going to a live wire, it will automatically change into AC volts. Give me an indication that there's a hazardous voltage present. It's an AC volt and it's up around 121 volts. So this is a very simple tool, fits in your pocket, very safe, very simple to use. The next level is when we get into a unit that has a display. What the display lets us do is go a little bit further. So if I'm connecting into a live wire and I want to see a little bit more, I have the AC indication, the hazardous voltage indication, 120 volts. But now I can see, is it 121? Is it 125? Is it 115? I can now see a, a measurement. These devices also work great for DC. Uh, some of the electrical testers, when you connect them though, they have a threshold at which they'll trigger for DC. So these trigger at 12 volts, this nine volt battery is not enough to really show me that, uh, that there's voltage there. So I'm gonna take another device, put a little bit more voltage on there, and it will turn on. So the threshold on these is about 12 volts. Right now I'm putting 48 volts into this. We have an indication that there's a hazardous voltage. It's DC, it's positive, it's 48. And then I have a measurement that says it's 47.9. Now one of the important aspects of these is very useful for electricians is these have a low input impedance. In other words, I'm using a mega ohm meter here and it's showing me that I have 0.03 mega ohms that's going into this device when I'm putting in 48 volts. I'm actually putting in 100 volts, but because of the low input impedance, this uh, is overloading my mega ohm meter, but at least it's giving me an indication. If we contrast that with a kind of a normal multimeter or a even just a, a regular clamp meter, what we have is now we're seeing that we have a one mega ohm input and resistance on with 110 volts DC. Now, what that is, is that's a higher input impedance, and that's really to protect uh, delicate circuits, and it also makes it very safe, because if we go to Ohm's law, we put the voltage over the current, we can see there's only some a couple microamps that are flowing right now. So that's very safe, but when you have an open line, that's running through the ceiling, maybe there's a bunch of motors hooked up, what happens is that wire will act like an antenna and it'll pick up voltages like an antenna would 
And when you hook up a multimeter or a clamp meter with a high input impedance, it's actually going to read like 30 volts, 40 volts. That's not there. And that's called a ghost voltage. So these devices actually put a load on the circuit, not enough to be dangerous, but enough to uh, kind of load down those open wires so you don't get false readings from ghost voltages. Now one of the really nice things I like about these testers that, uh, is that they have a modular test lead. So you saw how I just pulled off the test leads and then what's nice about this is I can add all kinds of different adapters to this. So if I want to get onto let's say a screw terminal I can just take off the regular leads and attach these alligator clips. If I want to get onto a bus bar or something bigger I can attach this alligator clip. So this is, this is really a nice feature to be able to change these leads out and put the types of probes you want on it depending on what kind of job you're doing. Another nice feature of this is they have a GFCI tester. Now what this is is it's not just a short and an open. It's not just shorting it out to see if we're uh, triggering it. This actually tests it to the specification. If I'm between 100 and 115 volts, we're going to have somewhere between 6 to 9 milliamps loading it down to see if the GFCI circuit will trip. If we're at 150 to 250 volts, it'll trip, at, it'll put out less than 12 milliamps load. So what we're doing is we're actually testing that at the specification because under the, the worst situation, it only takes 40 milliamps to stop your heart. So this is testing that at a very low level, 12 milliamps or less, to make sure that those outlets are truly doing their job and they will keep you safe. The next tester I'd like to go into takes this concept a little bit further and goes into close to a clamp meter. And this is the Fluke T5. And this is one of the most popular meters that's out there for electricians because it fits in your pocket, very easy to use, has that uh, automatic voltage selection, has the removable test leads, has the category rating for industrial use. So, and it also comes with these flat test leads, which are kind of nice because what they do is they fit very nicely into outlets and they lock in there so they're not always poking around. So here I plug it in. All I did was turn it on to voltage. It automatically tells me I have a hazardous voltage and the value is 119 volts. This one doesn't really trigger because we select the voltage. So now if I wanted to measure things like a 9 volt battery, it will actually just give me a good reading for DC. So this is a little bit more versatile than the electrical testers and gives you a couple more features. Another feature that's really nice about this is that it has this built-in current clamp. Now what a current clamp will do for you is we can go out and we can measure how much current is on the line. If I have a device, I just turn it into amps. And so now we see that we have 1.3 amps to get a better reading, you really want to kind of be down in the sweet spot, and that tells me that we have about 1.6 amps. So what this is very handy for is if you're troubleshooting something, you want to know how much current it pulls. If I turned on that drill and it popped a circuit breaker, I'd kind of want to know, well, is it the drill or is it do I just have too many things plugged into that circuit breaker at the same time? So a 15 amp breaker, going to trip out. You want to make sure you have enough room on that breaker to use the tools or to troubleshoot things like um, how much power is this device really using. So that current feature is very nice and the open jaw, it fits into some tight spots where you might not be able to get a normal current clamp. And that's where this is a very handy device. All of these devices also have a feature, well these two, where they can measure resistance. Now it's not as high resistance that you can read on a multimeter. This one will read to 1K ohms and this one will read to 10K ohms. So it gives you the ability to measure low resistance. But because they're electrical testers, the idea is to give you everything you need to do basic electrical work, very handy to use, automatic, and very safe. So I hope this gives you a good indication 
of what an electrical tester can do versus a clamp meter and versus a multimeter. Later on in this series, I'm going to go into different types of clamp meters, different types of multimeters, and what advantages they have for you there. If you have any questions, I have a lot of information on my website, which is uh, meterhelper.com, and I'm going to open up the Meter Helper shop pretty soon. So that way, if you like what you see and you want to buy from me, I'll be able to offer it to you. I also offer used equipment that I've been using as demos, and um, I just don't need it anymore. So thank you very much for your time, and I hope this has helped you at least make your decision what type of electrical tester you might want to go into, or if you want to go into a clamp meter or something like that. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye now.